so recently I've been doing a lot of research when it comes to uh, aquarium filtration. Uh, when it comes to aquarium filtration, there's actually two different types of bacteria that typically gets housed inside these filters. There's uh, aerobic bacteria or anaerobic bacteria. So when there's fish waste in the water, like uh, fish poop or uneaten fish food, uh, that waste builds up and it becomes ammonia, which is toxic to the fish. And when that ammonia builds up, the bacteria in your filter is um, doing its job by breaking that down to make it less toxic. Now there's three steps when it comes to this byproduct of fish waste. It's ammonia, nitrite, and then nitrate. Uh, ammonia is the first step, which is the byproduct of fish poop or uneaten fish foods, or just random stuff in the water that just pollutes the quality. The first step in the conversion is converting it into nitrite. It's not fully completed yet, and it's just another step into becoming nitrate, which is the final step. So the first step is ammonia, second step is nitrite, and then uh, the third step is nitrate. You can do certain things to get rid of nitrates. You can do water changes, which dilutes nitrates. It doesn't get rid of it all unless you do like 100% water change. But you would do a water change to dilute nitrates to make less nitrates in the water. You can either add plants to soak in the nitrates, as nitrates do benefit plants very well. And as the plant grows, it'll be consuming the nitrate in your water, therefore reducing your nitrates. And then there's another step that kind of utilizes um, a type of bacteria that colonates in your filter. This is anaerobic bacteria, which appears in static bed filtration uh, that doesn't have a lot of flow, or um, certain things like deep sand beds, or if you're a saltwater enthusiast, uh, I think you're I think it lives on your live rock. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not really a saltwater person. But anaerobic bacteria is basically the one that converts your nitrates into nitrogen gas, which eventually just bubbles up and leaves your water column. And then that's why I had this new design on the left side, which promotes anaerobic bacteria. So yeah, I'll just go ahead and show you guys the clip and I'll show you what I did today. So I recently customized my sump and made a little contraption on the left side. Uh, as you can see, the left side is where those four blocks were. Uh, my most recent video was on these four blocks right here. And this is what I was using to um, promote anaerobic bacteria. Uh, I initially had them drilled in a little jar and put it inside the K1, but I thought it'd be a lot easier to monitor if I were to just make a little divider and put them on the left side. In one of my old videos, I showed you how to make a lid for any of your aquariums with uh, just a polycarbonate roofing that people use for greenhouses. You can buy the polycarbonate sheet at Home Depot for less than 10 bucks and you get yourself eight feet of material to work with. Uh, I use the same material to build this divider along with uh, some suction cups I bought from uh, Amazon. So you can see the suction cups are here. And then what I did was I drilled holes in the divider Let's see if I can zoom in so with those holes in the polycarbonate sheet I'm able to use them for flow management along with the structural integrity of the divider itself as you can see here uh, water flows directly into those creases and then it pushes water to the other side through the holes that's drilled and this is actually really good it's working really well with containing the K1 on one end this section of the sump is actually being circulated by this little power head right here, which pumps water into the pothos and then uh, returns right here, back to this side of the aquarium. Um, this circulates this area, along with uh, the K1 water being pushed to this side. Along with that, I got a, a, a piece of PVC that kind of angles the flow, so it flows that way, because originally I had this flowing straight down. If I were to leave it the way it was, it kind of pushed this wall and it just kind of collapsed. So I went ahead and got one of those uh, angled pieces and I'm now pushing the direction that way. So as you can see, the flow is going to the right. And with the K1 now in more of a confined area, it actually looks like it's working way better because the K1 is actually bumping into each other instead of just kind of floating around. 
So while it's more confined on the right side, it, it is actually working a lot better than it was before. K1 is actually pretty hard to contain. Um, any small crack uh, between the divider, uh, your K1 will actually come out from the crack and come over to this side. So uh, your cuts have to be really precise or you just, or if you can, uh, go get some glass and silicone it, but I'm not too sure if you would want to do this to one of your sumps, just in case you want to change up the setup. For me, uh, I'm very indecisive on my parts and my filtration. I'm always changing things up, so that's the reason why I didn't want to go with silicone and glass. But if I knew that this is going to be my permanent setup, then I'll go ahead and silicone that. Hopefully, this section of the sump becomes a good anaerobic uh, bacteria factory. I was looking into getting a marine pier, those, uh, those huge filtration blocks that promote anaerobic bacteria but I've noticed on the forums and discussions that a deep sand bed does exactly the same thing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and make some silos uh, filled with sand along with some um, biomax I have here and this is actually one of them uh, if everything works well I'm going to be lining up the insides with these jars what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be filling this with Biomax along with a whole bunch of sand to cover it. This should actually provide a very low oxygenated environment for the anaerobic bacteria to thrive and hopefully it will develop in here. Uh, I have a whole bunch of jars that I'm going to practice using it on and if this works then I'll go ahead and find a bigger jar and I will just fill up that jar with the sand and the uh, and the biomax so i hope this works and hopefully it looks cool too um it would suck if it looked shitty but hopefully it looks cool and uh, if it looks cool and it works then that'd be awesome All right, so technically this should be deep enough for the anaerobic bacteria to thrive. Um, it's pretty tall, so I uh, don't think there'll be that much oxygen in there. And the only source of flow will be at the very top. Um, so the anaerobic bacteria shouldn't be disturbed towards the middle or bottom of this little jar. So let's go ahead and fill the rest up with sand and uh, we'll see how it goes. So we have the jar in now, it's all the way in the back there. It's actually housed next to the four bricks that I did a review on last video. So yeah, this sump is almost complete once this anaerobic bacteria section is up and running. I should have a pretty crazy aerobic bacteria section on the right side with the K1. Also um, a good section for the anaerobic bacteria on the left side. If it works, then this sump will be very effective in uh, converting ammonias to nitrite and then nitrites to nitrate, and then efficiently removing the nitrate from the system itself. Stay tuned for the next project. Uh, they do come along the way. <laughs> like this is very random. Uh, I was reading up on deep sand beds for the past couple days, and uh, this is what I kind of came up with. I'm definitely gonna test the water now compared to before, and uh, if it works, I'll let you guys know. But uh, this will definitely take a while for the test to actually prove right or wrong. Uh, I need the nitrates to build up. I do weekly water changes so the nitrates in this tank doesn't build up too much, but uh, I'll just utilize this time to feed my pyra extra so the nitrates can build up and then hopefully uh, I'll be able to test if these silos work. This might not be enough sand to even house enough anaerobic bacteria, so I might need to make a couple more and I'll put them in and uh, I'll report back.
Thanks for watching. Peace, guys.